Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Light Images. In this video, I'm going to have a look briefly at some differences between different printers, but really to look at the question of what it is you're getting when you get a better printer. Um, how will you know you've got a better printer? Well, I've been doing some tests. This is the Epson P5300, and I've got a P5000 upstairs. Now, the P5000, an older one, but the P5300, this one, has effectively the print head and ink set of the P900, P700 in the chassis of the P5000. Now, the P5000 is big, like this. It has really good sheet paper handling, really good roll paper handling, has a cutter. In many ways, it's a vastly better printer than the P900. Well, unless you want to print on smaller sheets of paper as well and do borderless on sheets, but that's another matter. I'll come back to a lot of this stuff when I do the full review of this, where I will look at it in comparison, and I'll do some videos comparing specifically this and other printers as well, looking at them. But really, all these pictures I've got here, it's the same picture, printed on different printers, different settings. It's my standard test image that I use a lot. Um, that's that one there. Um, it's downloadable from the North Light Images website, but this is also one of my images with it, which has some very strong colors, which are difficult to print. And what I was looking at are what are the differences in the fact that the P9, uh, the P900, 5300 versus the P5000 has a slightly different ink set. Well, it turns out that actually the P5300, uh, um, in some ways, is easier to get better prints out of. Well, that fits the fact that it's aimed at, um, yeah, it's aimed at a more general market. The P5000 was aimed at the proofing market. It's very good for you know, making sort of fine art prints, great on sort of different papers. Got loads of examples. I've got a review of it and stuff like that. Similarly, as I will have a detailed review of this in due course. But really what I was, in looking at these prints, whilst I was running these off this morning, all different settings and things, somebody asked me about how to get better prints, how to make printers better. And I realized that this technical drive for better quality in printers is invisible to most people. Uh, I would reckon that if I gave these prints to most people and just said, tell me what's different about these prints. The first thing they would look at would be to see whether there are any people in the picture or any physical aspects. Nobody normally is going to notice much of a difference between the fine points of colour printing. Does that mean it doesn't matter? No, far from it. But it made me think again, and I've covered this before in videos, is what are you really after when you want a better printer? Is it that um, it's going to magically make your prints look better? No, it won't. Um, in some ways, it's very similar. I've used the analogy of you can, you, know, you can learn to drive in a Ferrari, you can learn to drive in a, in a small car. Um, I'm going to say that to get the benefit of what the Ferrari offers, you need driving experience. Um, similarly, to get the benefit from a printer like this, you need some experience and to know what to look for. But what's the key difference between what I can get out of a printer like this and a much smaller, cheaper printer? One like the Epson ET8550, which I tested a couple of years ago. Ink tank printer. Nice and cheap to run. Goes up to A3+. Plus. These are only A3 sheets, so bigger prints than this it'll do. So you've got that. What are you really going to get out of it? The main limitation on printers today in getting great image quality is you. It is your skills or lack of them. Oh, by the way, that applies to me as well. It's about getting the image that goes to the printer is the key thing. Now, getting a better printer, yes, that some, in some ways makes it easier, much like getting a better car but it doesn't change the fundamentals of perhaps driving down to the shops and actually knowing how to use the car. And in, I find with these, great, these printers, I can make really nice prints, but when I stack them up against other ones, I think, well, yeah, I can see the difference. 
very few other people are going to notice the difference. Even if I put much stronger glasses on than this and look at details and things, yes, there are subtle differences. But the number of people who genuinely notice that, and I don't mean yourself, um, I mean other people, assuming you want other people to look at your prints, it's whether other people notice, and they don't. And this is a great disappointment to many people when they realise that just buying a new printer doesn't necessarily make your prints look any better. Because what makes a big, a, a good print? Well, it's the image itself. What's that composed of? Well, it's the photography. So, and I include in the photography the choice of subject, what you're trying to achieve in your photography, if you're trying to achieve anything, you don't have to. Uh, it could be just a representation of a view or something like that. But the actual thought before you press the shutter button, that's the stuff, that bit of photography. Then there is the optimum use of your camera system in getting the best results out of the camera. Now, there again, much like getting a better printer, getting a better camera can enable you to get better photos out of it. However, in general, you need experience to be able to make use of things like that. I don't recommend people, everybody goes out and gets themselves a tilt shift lens for landscape photography, for example. It doesn't suit many people. They're expensive. Um, I use it because I'm an architectural photographer. I would say that to get the best out of it, you need to use it a lot. So it goes the same with printers on that. Then You've got, you've used your kit, lens choice and things like that. And I've covered the, the full hardiness of always buying new cameras, that it doesn't really do anything. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a new printer, you, you've got your camera, you've got your images, optimal use of those, that bit of kit to get your, get your quality images out of it. Then it's about editing. And that can be anything from cropping, adjustments to brightness, colour, various things like that. It's up to you. That's your choice. There is no set step sequence of do this, 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 and you'll get a great picture. That's why one thing, I hate presets and things like that. I will perhaps, when I come across them in software, I will perhaps glance at them just to get some ideas, or more usually to get ideas of what I shouldn't do to an image to it. I, I find most of them not dreadfully useful. They produce fashionable images, ones that might get you likes on social media, but are of precious little use for anything beyond that. Um, so you've got, you know, you've got your images, you've processed them. There is some skill in finessing files to make prints. But that something is relatively easy to learn. And if you start at smaller prints on simpler printers, then you will quickly get the skills to be able to produce larger prints. But the problem is, once you start making larger prints, your photography is much more at show. So making big prints is not just a matter of getting a bigger printer, bigger paper, etc. like that. It's what goes into those prints. And that is the tricky bit. It's also the bit that people don't want to cover. And I, as I mentioned this, and I make no apologies for mentioning it again, people much prefer to learn some basic skills that can be written down and processed and produce things than actually think about your photography. Now, I'm not saying that everybody needs to have a mission. Their photographs don't need to say much. I mean, I'm not one for that at all. Um, I have no deeper meaning in any of my photos at all. That's not how I work. It's not my approach to photography. But I know that to get great prints, I need to actually take great photographs in the first place. So it is not the printer. It's about you and me as well. Um, I'm, I have critics of my photos in that I get clients choose to hire us again or they don't choose to hire us again, whether I might make print sales occasionally. Now, print is not a big part of our business, but it is a part of a business as much promotion as anything else. But in looking at these prints here, are any of them specifically better? One of these was printed on a four ink printer. I tested recently the Canon TC20M, 24 inch roll paper printer. Only four inks CMYK. 
one of these images was printed on a CMYK printer. And certainly at this distance, now I know which one it is, I can potentially see some differences. But the chances of you spying on video, which one, unless you've got some way of reading what I've written on the side of the, uh, on, on the, side of the picture, uh, you simply won't be able to tell. And that's the point. Quit worrying about better printers. Learn to use the one you've got. Get as good as you can afford and will be able to use. But pay more attention to the photography. Pay more attention to what you print. Um, I know much of what I cover on this channel is about the technical aspects of things. Part of that is because I've long in my professional photography had a belief that by learning to understand and use the technical aspects of photography, by knowing it well enough that I can forget about it most of the time, except on those occasions when it's useful and I need it. Uh, most of the time in my photography, when I'm working commercially, I am not thinking about shutter speeds and things like that, or you know, color. I, I know I, I know all that stuff. What I'm thinking about is: is the photography going to be good enough for what I need for it? Um, now, whether that works for you or not, always happy to hear people's comments on this because I appreciate that some people do, and I'm not saying it's wrong, do enjoy the technical aspects of photography. But if you find your photography has gone a bit flat, you're not going anywhere in it, you feel you could do better, have a look at the fundamentals, not stuff like this. This is, yes, I do find this fascinating and I'm really pleased that I get to try out stuff like this. But when it comes down to it, it's about the photography. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that's of some interest. Um, I will have lots more bits and pieces about this printer and other kit and things I've got. And I will be coming back to a, a few more aspects of the why about photography, not just the, you know, the techie details of it. Anyway, thanks and bye.